All right, the calculus um, BC free response questions are up. The AB ones have uh, not been posted or the link is broken, so I'm still waiting for them. So I'm going to start with the BC ones, but some of them overlap with the AB. Um, as usual, this, there's no official score solutions out yet. So any corrections or any mistakes that I make, I will put as a pinned comment below. So make sure you check those before um, for commenting about things that I you know point out or make a mistake on. Okay, so we have the temperature of a coffee cup, all right? is modeled by a decreasing differentiable function C, where C is measured in degrees Celsius. And so, okay, so it's decreasing and differentiable. Approximate C prime. So C prime of five is going to be approximately equal to, uh, using the average rate of change of C over the interval, show the work that leads to your answer, include units of measure. So we're going to do about C of, what what values are near five? Five is like in between here. So we're going to, it's approximately equal to C7 minus C3 over seven minus three, right? That's what we mean by that average rate of change. That's gonna be um, 69 minus 85 over four. And we just use our calculator for that. I'll go ahead and pull up my calculator just because um, this is a calculator FRQ. So we're gonna do 69 minus 85 divided by four. And I get negative four. Now, what are the units? This is degrees Celsius on the top and then per minute, degrees Celsius per minute and make sure we put the units of measure there like that. Using a left Riemann sum with three sub intervals is indicated by the data in the table to approximate the value of this, interpret the meaning of this. Now notice there's a 1 12th over here. So we're approximating this part and then we're going to use this calculation, right? And this is the average value because you're doing the inter integral divided by the interval width, right? So the integral from zero to 12 of C of T dt. And we're going to use three sub intervals with a left Riemann sum. So it's approximately equal to, do the width of your intervals, that's three. This interval width is four, this interval width is five. So it's gonna be three times. And then we use the left point, 100, plus um, this interval width is four times the left, left value in the interval, which is 85. And then interval width is five and the left interval width is 69, right? And so then when we do that, um, we can use our calculator that's three times 100, oops, plus four times 85, plus five times 69. Hopefully I type that in, that's 985. 985, and it's kind of weird, the integral, the units of this, because this is degrees Celsius, this is minutes, this is degrees Celsius minutes. I don't know if they would actually require units on here, but that is what the integral value, and that's what the units of that are gonna be, is gonna be the product of those two, degrees Celsius times minute. Now, um, one over 12th integral zero to 12, C of T, is the average value, okay? So you're gonna divide that by 12 to get this thing. Oops, divided by 12, and you're gonna get 82.083. I don't know if you need to calculate it because they just ask you to just interpret it. Uh, degrees Celsius is the average temperature of the coffee, of the coffee over um, T equals zero to 12 minutes. Okay, and that's the context there. So this is A, this is B, this is C. Oh, sorry, sorry, that's B, this is all B. Now we're doing C. For, the, for 12 to 20, so beyond this time interval, the rate of change is modeled by this. Okay, find the temperature of the coffee at times T equals 20 and show the setup for your calculation. So if I want the actual temperature and I have the rate of change, then we know the integral over this is going to be the change in the temperature, right? The integral of the rate, this is a fundamental theorem of calculus, the integral of the rate is gonna give you the change. So that means I wanna pick 20, or actually I'm gonna go from 12 to 20 here, of C prime of T, and you can just write it like that, and we use a calculator. And that's literally going to be C of 20 minus C of 12, right? And we know C of 12 is 55, this is 55, and so then to figure out the figure this out, we're just going to use our calculator to integrate this portion, right? And so uh, let's do, okay, uh, math. We're going to integrate this function, and this is going to be from 12 to 20. 
and we're going to do negative 24.55 e to the 0 0.01 x. Okay, and then divide that on the denominator is x on the bottom or t. Okay, and then that's that. So that means we're going to drop that temperature, but we're going to add in 55. Okay, and that's going to give me c of 20. Oops. Erase my calculator. C of 20 is equal to 40.329 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that is the temperature there. Okay, continuing on to part D. For the model defined in part C, it can be shown that C double prime is given that. Okay, for the, so they're just showing you that. If you took the derivative of this, you could get this quantity, I guess. All right. Uh, determine whether the temperature of the coffee is changing. If the temperature of the coffee is changing at a decreasing rate or an increasing rate. This is a little bit tricky on the terminology. They're asking you if the the chain the, the, the temperature, the rate of change of the, te the, the, <laughs> the rate that the temperature is changing is increasing. So that means whether or not C double prime is positive or C double, or this is negative for decreasing or C double prime is positive. So you have to demonstrate for that. So for D, we're gonna do C double prime at, um, uh, oh, okay, C double prime of T. Um, well, be, be, so if you look at this, this is always positive here. This is positive 100 minus T is always positive, is greater than zero. So it is at increasing, whether the temperature coffee is changing, it's an increasing rate, okay? And the way you wanna interpret that is that the, the, the temperature coffee is decreasing itself. But that rate, that amount that is decreasing by is decreasing less and less and less and less. So that's why it is at an increasing rate. And that's as long as you justify that the second derivative is positive for the reason there. 